Good morning. Let's stand to our feet and let's worship. Oh 
Well, welcome to Canby Foursquare Church this morning. It's so good to be together and to worship together and to collectively just lift the Lord's name higher than any other name this morning, higher than any other circumstance. Amen? Amen. So as we continue to worship, let's just go ahead and take a moment and settle our hearts. As we focus on the presence of God, and all that he is, and the truth of who he is, and as we sing and lift up our voices this morning, it is because he is worthy, and he is holy, and it is our honor this morning and our privilege to worship him. Yeah. 
soul to him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain, holy, holy is he. Sing a new song to him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of kings. You
adore you this morning. Anyways, we just lean back into your holiness and how great that you are and how holy that you are. Lord, we feel your presence and we can't help but worship. And you have our adoration this morning. And you are worthy. Oh, how you are worthy. We love you, Lord. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Would you please take your seat? We're going to actually continue in worship by the taking of the offering. And so if we could have the ushers come forward. I would like all of us, in just the spirit of that this morning, to take a moment before we, before we uh, send the offering bags around. Take a moment this morning. Let's close our eyes and let's just pause beyond the material blessings that God provides for us. Let's take a moment and thank God this week for his grace, for his forgiveness, for his blessing in our lives. Let's just take a moment and do that and then I'll pray over the offering. Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you that when we were not seeking you, you were seeking after us. We thank you, God, that though we are not always faithful, you are always faithful, for you're unwilling to deny who you are. We thank you, God, that you are our King and our Lord, and that though many kingdoms will come and go, that yours shall always stand, and we shall always be with you. We pray now, Lord, as we pass the offering out, Lord, that you would be honored, and once again, that this would be just our act of worship, of giving back to you, even as we have presented ourselves to you, as we've sung praises, that we would also present of our substance back to you, the things that you blessed us with, that we would bless you and continue your work here. We ask all these things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. A couple of announcements I'd like to uh, make this morning. First of all, could we have the slide uh, of Ron and Annette? They're, as many of you know, they are out in Albania doing a minister's conference, and they send their greetings, and the, uh, the conference is going very well. And Ron wanted to say that they've definitely seen real growth in the churches in, uh, in Kosovo and in Macedonia and in Albania. And he just wanted to remind everybody, you guys have been a part of that with your wonderful offering, which sponsored that entire conference for the ministers and paid some of their, uh, their ways, their lodging and travel expenses. So praise God for that. You know, I don't know how great of a conference uh, Ron can put on when you think the Apostle Paul planted the church in Macedonia. That's a tough act to follow if you, if you ask me. But uh, anyway... A uh, couple other things I want to make mention of. If you are uh, with us for the first time today or if you have a prayer request, one of the ways that we uh, pass the news on and know whether you were here or not is with our Connect card. We would love to get to know you. And so if you're uh, a guest today and would like to fill that out and stick that in one of the boxes at the back of the sanctuary after church, that would be wonderful. Or if you have a prayer request, that would be great too. One last thing, I just want to remind everybody about the upcoming Jingle Jam, which is not next Sunday, but the Sunday after that, right after Thanksgiving. And we are doing a community outreach, and it's happening down here at the church. It's not happening in downtown Canby. That's going to be a week later. This is the very first event in Canby for the Christmas season. And so we are inviting families, and we're asking you to invite your friends and your neighbors also, we could use just a couple more people to help out. We've been blessed with many people's response to the volunteer needs. That's been wonderful. We could use a couple more. And uh, if you'd like to uh, help out, uh, especially with the after service and before, or not after service, the be pre-event or post-event cleanup or setup, that would be especially helpful. So if the Lord's touching your heart on that, uh, why don't you see me right after service? I'll be out at the information desk out in the lobby.
We're going to now switch gears, and we're going to open up God's Word. And uh, let's bow our heads and, and pray and ask God to speak to us this morning. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your Word. We thank you that you have not left us without a witness of yourself, that when we open the Word, it is your voice speaking into our life. We pray, God, that you would find in us a receptive heart, that we might hear what your Holy Spirit would speak to us today. Would you bless Pastor Mark as he brings the message today? Give him utterance from the Spirit. Give him, Father, conviction. Guide his words this morning. We ask all these things in Christ's name. Amen. Good morning, church. Good to be back with you. I was just snugged up with my wife down there and forgot that I'm supposed to come up and preach. She's cuddly and warm sweater. <clears throat> we are going to continue our series in the book of First John. We started this series last week. Uh, I let you all know that we would be settling in here for the the next few weeks, I'm up, uh, I started it off last week, be here this week and next week, and Ron and Annette, they'll be uh, coming back in, uh, on Friday. So I said, Ron, maybe you shouldn't take a preaching about 40 hours after you land from an airplane coming from another country. I'll take that one. And uh, he, he went with my request. And so I'll be preaching next week. Ron and Annette will be back with us. Uh, one more announcement, uh, just as... Um, just a way of reminder, church, we, uh, every year we do something uh, called the angel tree, and out here in the lobby, we have um, about 150 kids that need, need some gifts, about 300 gifts, so we have each person, each kid gets two gifts. I want you guys to go out there, and uh, you guys can uh, meet with my friend Glenn. Glenn's down here in the front row. Glenn, why don't you wave to us? That's Glenn, Yeah. Glenn puts this event on with his sister, and they do this for us every year, and we want to be a church that we want to make sure there is no name left on that tree. We want to make sure that we are uh, being a blessing to families, um, just as a, a word of testimony. Uh, when I was growing up, we, I was on those trees for a number of years, and I had people just like you that grabbed a hold of my family when I was a young kid and made sure that uh, I had Christmas gifts and Thanksgiving dinner. So um, it's close to my heart. So I just want to remind you, angel tree out there, grab some names, buy some gifts, and yeah. So back to the book of 1 John. We will be uh, setting up in 1 John uh, chapter 1, verse 5 through 10 this morning. And if you remember last week, we looked at 1 John uh, verses 1 and through verses 4. And John is uh, the last living apostle of Jesus. He was I, what I presented arguably Jesus' closest friend. He was with Jesus at key events in his life. Uh, the Mount of Transfiguration where Moses and Elijah came down. He was uh, with Jesus uh, through the, the duration of his ministry, Jesus said him and his brother, they're the sons of thunder. They nicknamed him because he was fiery and excited. He was either fully on or totally off. And John was the one where Jesus, when he was hung on the cross, that it was Jesus' closest friend that he looked down and he said, Behold, mother, this is your son. Son, this is your mother. And he gave his own mom to Jesus. John is now an older man. John, he has uh, moved to Ephesus due to persecution that was happening in, uh, in, his, in his home state of Jerusalem. And, and he has moved, and he has moved out of, of Israel. He has moved to, um, to the town of Ephesus. And around here, we know that at, towards the end of John's life, he began to uh, plant churches, to work with churches, to uh, minister in this community of, of churches around Ephesus. And we 
John is now writing another, writing this letter, and he wrote three letters. He wrote a gospel, and he wrote the book of Revelation. John is a busy man. He writes, he's known as being the one whom Jesus loved, the beloved disciple. John is a man who loves the church. And what we were left with last week in the book of 1 John, we were left with John setting up... um, what a life of joy would be. John said in, in two basic outlines, he said fellowship with uh, the Lord, fellowship with one another. And this is a recipe mixed with strong doctrine of who Jesus Christ is, is a recipe for deep joy this side of eternity. That's where we're left with John. And John's going to unpack that. And it will actually, our text this morning will serve as not only unpacking those first few verses, it will also serve us as, serve us as a bridge to next week's sermon where we will look at Jesus and atoning not only for our sins, but the sins of the whole world. That is where we are in the story, in the epistle of First John. So we're going to just keep trekking through this uh, chapter by chapter, and we're going to run through the book of First John. And here's just, uh, I had some really fun feedback. You are a nice church. You're enjoyable to preach to, and you also came with some questions. And the reason, again, why we do this is because there are major themes that run through entire books of the Bible. And I ser- shared with you last week that nobody just sat down and said, you know what, it's Wednesday morning, grab me a cup of coffee. I'm Mr. Apostle John, I'm going to write scripture. Scripture, actually, it developed over about 1,500 years, 40 authors, three continents. Scripture, uh, what, what's so amazing about this book is that it doesn't just share the good stuff. It shares the bad stuff of those who follow the Lord. It shares... Uh, their struggles, it shares their weaknesses. And scripture, it, it, it kind of grew in the midst of culture and the fabric of the world that was going on. It wasn't this book that floated down from a mountain. I know because there's a lot of mountaintop stories in the Bible, we can kind of think, oh, the Bible must have just floated down also. It didn't happen like that. It happened because there were real people writing to other real people. And when we go through the text, like we are doing, that we, we're trying our best to say, what, what was John saying to the church that he loves? What was John saying to the church outside of Ephesus? And we're trying to draw interpretations and then make applications in our own life. So for instance, I didn't set out this week, I didn't plan it out my sermon series, oh, we're going through John, I'm going to talk on fellowship. That's my, that's, that's my go-to, that's my wheelhouse sermon, his fellowship. It's not, but because spending time in the text and studying through in light of what John has written, that's what the text drew me to. So that's what we're going to talk about this week, because that's what John's talking about. And I, you know, I might have wanted to come out and talk about inerrancy of scripture, or maybe woo you with uh, John chapter 11, or the Gospel of Luke, or, but this is where we are, and this is where the text is taking us. And that's why we, go through, uh, why we go through a book like this, because we want to be drawn to where the text leads us. Everybody on the same page? All right, good. I also challenged you last week to try to read through the book of 1 John, starting in chapter 1, going through verse or going through chapter 5, in a single sitting. I broke my PR time of 18 minutes down to 1728. So, (laughs) moving faster. Did did anybody sit down and read the book of 1 John? Okay, a couple shy hands. Don't be shy. You read the Bible. Good for you. We're going to jump right on into the text. Open up your Bibles. 1 John, chapter 1, verse 5. Or go to your devices. From my last week comment, all of you are shy now. You're holding your Bibles down here. It's fine. It's fine. Okay, here we go. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaimed to you that God is light. And in him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him 
While we walk in darkness, we lie. We do not practice truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. And this is the word of the Lord. I remember one time when uh, somebody was sharing with me about hearing the voice of the Lord, and I was struggling through, like, how do you do that? And they, you know, it's kind of like this inner, inner voice that just speaks to you, and you just know. And I thought, okay. And then and I said, well, what if you, you want to read the Bible? What if you want to hear the audible voice, like the thunderous voice of the Lord? And my friend said, oh, then just read the Bible out loud. And I went, <laughs> fair enough. Audible voice of the Lord. Sounds strikingly familiar. <clears throat> so we're going to break down uh, our text into three parts today. We're going to look, um, if we turn our attention here to the first slide, what we will do is we'll look at first in verse 5, we'll look at the truth. And then verse 6 and 7, we'll look at the truth lived out or, uh, or the truth applied. And then the truth made clear. So verse 5 will be the truth. Uh, Yep, and then the truth lived out will be verse 6 and 7, and then 8 through 10 will be the truth made clear, and that's the direction that we're going, and if you're taking notes. So we have a title, Walking in God's Light. We are going to look at what it looks like to walk with the Lord, to, uh, or in how other authors, uh, Paul would say, to have relationship with the Lord. We're going to look... What does it mean that somebody would have relationship to this invisible God? Well, John, again, he is that man that he will use his testimony. He used it in the first verses to say, not only was I there uh, with him, I saw him, I touched him, I uh, lived with him, I knew him. This is an apostle that was with Jesus uh, before his death, burial, and resurrection, and he was there after. He was there watching Jesus ascend into heaven in Acts. He, he's an apostle that was with the Lord. And he will use his testimony to say, this is what it means. Jesus is no longer with him. What it means to walk out uh, a relationship with the Lord. And John will say, the message that you heard. Again, what we do here is we tie the text together. This isn't an independent verses that we are just making a message alone, but it's connected to our, the previous text. That Jesus, what, what we see here is Jesus, sometimes what we can, we can do with a message or with the scripture, we can go, well, we're red letter Christians. Whatever's in the red letter of the gospels, that's what Jesus said. But what John says here. He goes, he tells us in the opening, uh, in verse 5 here, this is a message that we heard from him and that we proclaim to you. This is an interesting insight because this is actually what John is saying. Presumably the apostles heard from Jesus. This is something that, this wasn't a big message, big light and dark. wasn't a message that we see Jesus uh, preaching about. But this is a little insight to Jesus and what, what we saw when he would sit with the disciples, when he would spend time, when he'd walk along the seashores, when he would uh, maybe go home to rest, we get this insight where he goes, this is, this is a message that Jesus told us. And that message, the truth that he's going to uh, say is that, that Jesus, he is, he is light. And in him there is no darkness. And remember what John's going to do here. John works in extremes. John, he's going to put, he's going to put light and he's going to put dark. And he's going to make these so that they're so clear. So that there's no room for, well, he could have easily said in this text, this is the message that you've heard from him we proclaim to you. That God is truth and in him there's no lie. But just like what we go through today, that... 
everybody, it's the human heart to go, well, what's truth? What's your truth? Well, everybody has a little bit of truth. And he's going to go, no, no, no. God is complete. He's completely light. And in him is no darkness. And he's, he's speaking into a cultural uh, situation going on with early stages of, of Gnostic teaching. And uh, that's for another date. But there's, there's also cultural teaching that's happening where people are saying that there's secret knowledge and, and what really is light and what really is dark. And John is going to address that and he's going to say, no, Jesus is all light. It's not this yin and yang in him that there's a little bit of bad or really bad people. They got a r- little bit of good. He is totally light and he's going to separate uh, these, these two so that there's, there's no dimmer switch in the first century, right? We can't go in and go, oh, Ma- Pastor Mark, I got you. A little dimmer. Is he a little bit bad? No. Dark and light. And we'll see throughout the rest of the book, if you look up on the board here, you'll see that there's other contrasts that are happening. John might use light and dark here, but uh, later on he'll use worldly. He'll use, um, he'll use uh, the Antichrist. And he will use these two contrasts. He will make these contrasts so that there's camps that we can go, okay, this is clearly of the Lord and this isn't. So this is what John will be doing throughout his book. He's an extreme man. And I believe the reason John is also alluding to this dark and light is he's also going to refer back to creation. So if you remember last week, John, his point that he makes, he's going to not just take Jesus from the the origin stories of Jesus when he's a little baby in a manger and well, and little sheep and some gifts he's going to go all the way back to the creation all the way back to before time uh began and he's going to say jesus was there and john is going to continue this this theme and he's going to say light and dark in the beginning this book this god this epistle this letter opens in the beginning god and he's going to take jesus back to god and oh in in the opening of genesis light and dark john's going to do the same thing again And he does the same thing in his epistle. He's going to equate Jesus all the way back to the beginning of time. And so we want to be able to recognize this and recognize patterns as different authors write different. And different insights into the way that they're experiencing the Lord. So this is the truth in verse 5. And he's going to tell us how to live out this truth in in verses 6 and 7. The truth lived out. So walking in light of God is gonna, it's gonna have a it's gonna have ramifications. How do you actually live out walking with the Lord? He'll tell us. Let's carry on here in verse six and verse seven. If we say we have fellowship with him, we walk in darkness. If we lie, we do not practice the truth. But if we walk in light as he is in the light, we uh, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. So he's going to, John is going to tell us to, how, to be with the Lord is to have fellowship with him. What does that look like lived out today? What does that actually look like to walk with the Lord today? What does it look like to uh, be able to hear what's on the Lord's heart today? And I've put it into two, uh, two ways that we primarily walk out in here from the Lord. And one is the word. There is just, um, there's no way around we need to walk with the Lord. We need to hear from him. We are blessed enough that when we say, you know, what's on God's heart? Well, he wrote a book, okay? He has a book. We can actually see how God has lived out with his people um, from the beginning of time. That we actually see what a relationship looked like. And we get to see the ins and the outs. We see how things went well and how things went bad. We, We spend time in the word. This is our primary source of how we hear from the Lord. And, yeah... On a side note, I probably shouldn't tangent. From the look of my wife's face, I shouldn't. Uh, but just, if you flip ahead to chapter, uh, chapter 2, he goes on to 
a bunch of, I am writing you, little children. I'm writing you, fathers. I'm writing you, uh, young men. I, this is a side note. Just A lot of commentators will just say, well, he's, he's speaking to an era. He's young children, that's babies in the faith. Uh, young men, that's people who are maturing. And then uh, fathers that... Um, Those are older saints, and he's speaking to those in different eras of their faith, and it's kind of includes fair enough, but when uh, when you dive into the Greek, uh, it actually means like little kids, young men, and fathers, males, Uh, and I think that that is important because men. I just want to make a note that there's a lot of women Bible studies. There's a lot of women that are getting together. But just as a way of reminder, men, that God's intention for us in walking in light and walking in fellowship with him is that we're men of the word. That we're getting together, that we are, are the iron sharpening iron that we live out the word, that we're actually in fellowship with other men and saying, man, how does this apply to you? There's two great uh, men's Bible studies that happen at, on this campus. Uh, there's one in on Tuesday and one on Friday mornings. And it's just so important for us men to be leading well, that it's not up to our wives to be running Bible studies, that it's not our wives that... Uh, that's initiating uh, prayer with our kids. But, men, just take note of what John is talking about here. Um, sorry, babe. Uh, she's my front row to let me know. You're off track here. So the primary way that we walk with the Lord is through God's word. We get to know him through this book. And we know Jesus through the Bible. The whole entire book from beginning to end points to Jesus. The Old Testament narrative points to Jesus. The law points to Jesus. The prophets point to Jesus. The whole thing points to Jesus. As uh, I heard it was once said that you cut the Bible anywhere and it bleeds. It points to the blood of Jesus. And so we get to know Jesus. We have fellowship with him through the word. The second point of walking with the Lord is being intentional. Intentional time. Having time set aside to be with the Lord. Now, despite what you might think, I am not one of those uh, a latte and a journal type guy. I know the, the sport coat throws you off. But, uh, yeah, once again... Uh, I have not, I'm not somebody that's going to be the guy that just has a pile of journals to pass on to my children and they'll thumb through them and get deep theology and learn exactly where my father was with the Lord. I'm not that guy. That's not how I experience the Lord. How I experience the Lord is being intentional about bringing the Lord into space, uh, to, to my space where I experience him the most, where I'm the most open to him. For me, it's always come from physical activity. For me, it's always come from, uh, whether that's exercise or just being out, uh, being out in the garage, doing something around the house. And I, that's a place where I am open to the Lord and just say, God, speak to me. I need, I need to hear where you're leading me. For instance, our whole, when I was doing this sermon, I was thinking about our whole path to coming to this church. We had a few things on the table Uh, We were looking at planting a church. We were looking at senior pastoring in a couple other locations. And it was through just spending time with the Lord. And I was running this trail. And it was a trail that I was used to running. And that would be the place where I would just go and say, Lord, I need you to speak to me here. I need to feed my family. I don't want to just settle for a job. I feel like you've called me to something. I need you to lead me. It was on that run after several weeks, that the Lord had really spoke to me and said, I feel you should, you should reach out to a man in Canby named Ron Swor. I knew of Ron. There was some cross-talk going on between Ron and some other friends. But at this point, Ron had not even been interested whatsoever in uh, adding another pastor to the team. And 
I kept running, and I kept asking the Lord, I need you to speak to me. So I did what every man does. I went home, and I grabbed my bow, grabbed a handful of arrows, and threw it in my truck and went to the shooting range. And while I was at the shooting range, I was shooting my bow, and I just sensed the Lord saying, Mark, I want you to trust me on this. And I just had this feeling that the Lord was saying, I want you to trust me on this. So on top of a big rock, I remember exactly where I was, I, I text Ron, and t- Ron was in Jerusalem at the time, and Ron texted me back and said, let's talk. And I, and I look back, and as I was preparing this message, I just think, man, there wasn't anything magical. It wasn't writing in the sky. It wasn't, it wasn't even a cool burning bush. It was just inviting the Lord in and being intentional, saying, God, there's space for you. God, that there's room in my life for you. This isn't this isn't anything different than any other relationship. We have, good, we have good relationships. We have friendships with people in our lives. For some of us, those significant relationships are our wives, our husbands. And any good relationship takes getting to know someone. In this case, getting to know someone. This is how we get to know the Lord. Any good, healthy relationship is intentional time spent. That I... I can't, I can't live with my wife from date night to date night. That's not, as, as fun as date nights are, it's the, the mundane, it's the stuff in the middle that that's where we have to be intentional and be together. We can't live from one spiritual high one Sunday to one Sunday, but actually being intentional in our relationship with the Lord. And it's a fight. It's a fight. I'm a pastor. I've been a missionary for 10 years. It's still hard. It's difficult. It's difficult to say, God, I, I trust you in this, and I need you to speak to me, and I'm going to follow you with what you say. But I know from this book I can trust him, and I know that I'm inviting him into my life to be intentional. This is fellowship with the Lord. It's a continued relationship, not Sunday to Sunday, just like we wouldn't live on date night to date night. We don't don't live on the celebration of of the wedding. There's a marriage, right? And And that's important. Sometimes we can put all of our energy onto that wedding day. God, I just want to look perfect in my dress, and I want to be beautiful, and I want to, you know, Finally comb my hair. I used to have hair. And so I would comb it. You know, I just looked really sharp on that wedding day. And you can put everything, thousands of dollars, to make sure that the decorations are beautiful. You can put everything into the wedding and nothing into the marriage. And sometimes our relationship with the Lord can be strikingly similar. We put everything into the wedding the salvation, and nothing into the marriage, the relationship. The gospel is not something that happened to us in the past. It's something that's happening to us. It keeps happening, and we need it more today than we ever did. I need the gospel more today than when I was a young man at the end of high school. I need the gospel more today than I've ever needed the gospel it's relationship, walking with the Lord. The second point, and the hardest one, relationship with others. Now, the way that we continue to walk in relationship, that we walk in the light, is we walk with others. And this has not ever been easy. I, I feel the tension is, well, yeah, if I was in the Bible and I saw Jesus and, you know, early church, let's go back to Acts, you know, they kind of just sang songs and broke bread and shared everything, man, that would be cool, that's the real church. None of us want that, just so you know. Uh, that, that is a weird situation uh, that's happening only once in the Bible, and we, none of us want to just like sing kumbaya and hang out and have a constant sleepover with one another we uh but we do need the importance of fellowship to each other the way that the lord has continued to show us him is through one another and john is going to say that this is actually the recipe in connection to 
to Jesus and connecting to people. Remember last week, John says, we talked about John says, you can't say that you love God and hate people. You can't do that. You can't be like, man, I hate my neighbor. He's a real jerk. But I'm going to church on Sunday. That doesn't work. We're, we're, they're, they're, they're together. They're interconnected. And this, my friends, this isn't just because I, again, I'm not, not because I'm the, uh, the adult discipleship pastor, so I wanted to give you a message on fellowship with each other. This is difficult for me. As a pastor, it gets more and more difficult, uh, that, that feeling of isolation, the more and more where you go, who can you trust? Who can you not trust? Who do you uh, share this with? And I have to constantly fight that urge to go, no, I need the body. I need you. You need me in small doses. Uh, we need one another. We continue to open up our lives and make sure that we are open to accountability They were saying, hey, man, I'm struggling through this. I'm struggling through these types of sins in my life. That we're active in our accountability. We're active in our vulnerability. And I know that it can be difficult. The first century, the the church, the the New Testament, they were struggling through uh, racial divisions. They were struggling through um, Jew and Gentile divisions. They were uh, early on uh, circumcised, uncircumcised. There were plenty of things to separate the believers. And yet, the, the John tells us that we need one another. That we need to be sharpened from one another. It's a place of vulnerability, a place of repentance. That we, we come before people and we say, look, we're struggling. You can't, you can't live out your life and say, I live in the light. Remember, this is the opening. This is the truth. I walk in the light, but then you live in darkness. Sins that you live in darkness, that you're actively engaged, whatever your sin is, it, it, pornography, adultery, in relationship that's not in a covenant relationship active in substance abuse, food addictions, whatever our sins are. We can't say, yeah, those that we're walking with the Lord and we're actively living in the dark. It's, to prove my point, back here is darkness. Back here is where I can hide and I, and I don't have to face anyone that's the point he's making if you say you live in the light and you're in fellowship but you're staying in darkness then you're not actually dealing with your sins and he's not going to say what john is not saying is that you just live out a life sinless he's saying that somebody already took care of it he's saying that somebody dealt with it and it was a high price it was a high cost that jesus would come and take your place that it was a high cost that Jesus would take ours. And, and that cost is he's saying, Jesus took our sins away that we would have relationship with him. And that we want to choose to stay in that darkness. And he's saying, that's what's killing our relationship. I have plenty of sin. In case that's a mind blow for anybody that a pastor struggles with sin, I have a lot of it. And that's why I walk with people. That's why I walk in fellowship. That's why I continue to try to stay vulnerable. Lord, less of me, more of you. Let us walk together because I don't, I don't want this to separate. My sin already separated me from Christ one time. I don't want to live in a relationship where it continues to separate me. That we would walk with one another. And this, this brings us down to the third point the truth made clear. John is not telling us, hey, you're not gonna, you're gonna live a sinless life. What John is saying is that that sin separates us. And it's not God who's far off from you. It's not God who's far off from me. It's us that continue to stay distant from God because there's stuff that we do 
that, that's in the dark. There's stuff that we continue to uh, keep to us and saying, this isn't, this isn't a, a big deal. This isn't a sin. This isn't an addiction. That's a, that's a good one. This isn't really an addiction. I got, I got a handle on it. I don't need to be around people. I don't, I don't need people. I got this working out with me and the Lord. Look at the text. The text is saying... The way you work that out with the Lord is, yeah, you do that one-on-one. You spend time with the Lord. But if you want to have fellowship with the Lord, the, the Trinity, the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost, then you also live with people, that you live it out in vulnerability. Guys, that's why we're, we're trying our best. That's why we have tons of small groups. We have classes. We have courses. We want to do, have a home group. I don't, you don't have to have a small group here. Just be in a community and living vulnerable to one another that we could bring to the light the stuff that we're dealing with because this is what keeps us distant from the Lord. This is the same thing if, if Ash and I were fighting or we have an argument and, and, and we're both being stubborn and, and I know, I'm just hanging on to it. No, I'm not going to say I was wrong. I wasn't going to say, I'm not going to say I jumped uh, jump to conclusions or I, or I miss thought about her or I'm not, I'm not going to say I'm sorry and I just hold on to that. No, I'm right and I hang in there. It's going to keep, it's going to keep a distance, keep separation. And the only thing that I'm really truly hurting is myself because I'm not in relationship with her. In closing, I want us to think that this is, a, this is an invitation. This is an invitation to us today, for us that are here, that the Lord is, is speaking to you today. You're being invited into a relationship with him. That you're invited to, to, to search your heart and to say, man, where am I at with the Lord? And maybe you've been a Christian for a long time. Some of us some of us, and this is, this is me, I struggle with this. God, am I just getting older as a Christian or am I actually getting more mature? Because some of us, we profess Christ and we're Christians and we do uh, Bible studies and, and we're just getting older. doesn't mean we're maturing. just gets another year under our belt. I know, Pastor Mark, I know these stories. I grew up going to private school. I've been here for a hundred years since the foundations of Foursquare. I know this, and yet this is an invitation for us to see where our relationship to the Lord is. Because here's what I'm certain of familiarity kills relationship. Familiarity kills a relationship. When I just come home and I assume things that will happen between Ash and I, when I just assume, oh, this is how things are going to go, I'm not intentional towards her. And the same is true about our relationship with the Lord and with each other. We're familiar. I know how it's going to go. I know exactly how that person acts. I've been around him for years. I know that story. I know Jesus. Familiarity is a killer to our relationship. Today, walking in the light of God, there's truths. There's theological, doctrinal truths that we can stand on. And the truth is, is that this will bring us to, com- to real joy, the joy that gets you through the muck of life. And the, and the truth is, is that at the end of joy that we have, we're, we've spent with uh, fellowship with the Lord, fellowship with one another, and that our sin is big, but Jesus is bigger. That our wounds are real, that some of us are dealing with some real hurt and some real wounds. And it's easy to look at those and make those wounds really big and make his wounds really small. But Jesus' pursuit of us is for a relationship with him and relationship to others. And you're invited into that relationship today. Let's pray. Jesus... I don't know why you chose me to be in relationship with you. I don't 
don't know why before I ever loved you, you first loved me or any of us in this room. God, I just pray that this room today, that they would know there's not some perfect version of themselves that you're just waiting on. That there's not some perfect version that you want them to, to be at this level before they can walk in relationship with you. God, that you died for them, that you died for me, that you died for us while we were dead in our sins, while we were filthy. The, the, the best version of us to the worst version of us is what you died for, Jesus. God, I thank you that you have called us into relationship with you. God, would we take your word and put much weight on our lives, Lord, that would this be weighty, that we would say we believe the truth, that there's joy in this life and it comes from fellowship with you, being with you, being with others. God, would our sin be, uh, would we be reminded that our sin has been dealt with, Lord, that you have dealt with it and that we bring it into the light, that we walk with you in the light so the, the light can expose all areas of our life. God, I pray that this truth would be made big today. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for your word. Amen.